You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. I'm here today with Mr. On Good Singh, AKA Drone Gandhi. Not Drone Gandhi. Welcome to the show. Every time, every time. <laughs> but I can't stop you, so it's okay. Uh, I will probably do it every time too. You probably will, man, it's all right. So you just got back from India. I and, did actually, and yes. India, if I understand this correctly, is kind of going through a wave of regulation change. Yes, absolutely. I mean, so, yeah, go, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, but this is also having a macro ripple effect throughout the world. And I wanna talk about what India is doing. I think what India is doing is actually fantastic, but I think yeah. it would also be important to showcase some of the stories that you were just telling us pre-show about what's happening in Africa and how drones are really providing with the low yeah. barrier to entry that we're seeing, how it's really providing a new means to you know, societies out in Africa. Yeah, so we all know that you know drones are basically like fancy cell phones, right? from the, the technological innovations that come from you know, the IMUs and the, and the accelerometers that are in cell phones, these cheap, you know, readily available devices were then able to be used in products that are today drones, you know, fleets flying robots. And there are some groups out there that are doing amazing work in innovating a lot of these emerging you know, societies. So let's, for example, take, there's a company called We Robotics. Their CEO, Patrick Meyer, I look up to him a lot. I think he's doing amazing work. And what they're doing with what they call their flying labs is essentially going around the world and setting up these training programs where we can teach partners, we can teach folks in you know, developing economies around the world how to use drones for good. So for example, after the earthquake in Nepal, you know, the major earthquakes in Nepal, we robotics went and they taught, you know, local folks on the ground how to take drones to just deliver pills from one place to the next, or how to use drones like the Sensefly EB and the DJI Phantom series to create ortho mosaics of disaster prone areas in order to do structural damage assessments, as well as have maps of exactly what happened and what the scene is like today. So there's a lot of work that's being done around the world with these technologies that are, you know, they have a low barrier to entry. And that's because drones are, you know, for the most part, kind of cheap. They're not, so a lot of them are expensive, but not many of them. And so, for example, let's, you know, in a lot of countries in Africa that didn't have, you know, well put in place infrastructure systems for landmine telephone, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, and in the West, you know, people would look at that and they'd say, this is crazy. They don't have landlines everywhere. The communication has, you know, a very high barrier to entry because the infrastructure s simply doesn't exist. But then if you go now to many countries in Africa and throughout the world, almost everybody has a cell phone. In fact, almost everybody has a smartphone. And now let's take the example of drones that of course we all love and we care about. These flying robots that are able to, you know, deliver things or, put sensors that can genuinely help people on them. And I just came back from India, which is one of the world's biggest economies and you know a technological leader in terms of education and whatnot. But December 1st of this year, India's gonna make drones actually legal to fly. Currently drones are illegal to fly, illegal to import. A lot of people are doing it. Um, and a lot of people are doing work. There are, there are you know, but it's kind of pathways. Black, it's kind of a gray market, space. It's a yeah. gray space, but there are people in that country that are doing everything very legally, that have permissions from the government, et cetera, to fly these missions. For example, a lot of major cricket matches in the Indian Premier League cricket are being flown with drones. So India, it seems like with the this gray, this gray zone, maybe with new drone law, it's gonna clarify the space like it did in 2016 for the United States. Absolutely, the markets are opening up. I mean, that's why last week where I was, I was speaking at the Drone Federation of India's festival, the India's largest drone festival, because now with the markets opening up 
And with this regulation coming in place for industrial drone application, as well as the ability for, you know, photographers to simply fly, you know, in India, weddings are a really big deal. Today, a lot of weddings, they have drones at them. Yeah. And so now with these regulations opening up, we can really grow the market and grow the ability to use this technology. Drones can do amazing things. Land that could not be surveyed before, for example, in the Himalayas, in the Himalayas up north where, you know, the border roads organizations and, and other, you know, agencies that are building roads, et cetera, before there were, were never ever surveys done because you couldn't access these locations. But now with drones, they can access these locations, these very steep remote hillsides, create fantastic 3D models to do engineering work and build roads. In addition, the Indian Railways, which is one of the largest employers in the world and has one of the biggest railway systems in the world, hopefully they'll be able to use drones to go and essentially you know, do inspection and do management, et cetera, because we can add efficiency by enabling folks to use drones. It's, it's, it's really something that is amazing. So now, this is just the first wave of regulation though. We're expecting to see more regulations in India. Uh, absolutely, and, there's and a we'll... draft that's coming in December 1st with the drone 1.0, and then hopefully in early Q1 of 2019, we have the drone 2.0 regulations coming into place. So what do you? What can we expect to see in India if we wanted to operate in India? What are the drone laws looking like? Do they have maximum altitudes, maximum speed? These are all things airspace? that are being sorted out. These are all things where I don't know the specifics. You can go online and you can Google drone 1.0 regulation. My reason that I was there is because, you know, I wanted to talk about and help people understand what they can do with drones and what they can do with, you know, mapping technologies, aerial mapping technologies, and essentially teach these applications that we're doing here in the United States and in North America and in Europe and bring those over there. Because, I mean, these, that work's being done. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic, like, yeah. really fantastic. And one of the things that I do want to say, which I thought was fantastic, is the government has set up, you know, these, this drone task force and essentially a group, a body of subject matter experts and industry individuals who are helping and guiding the government bodies to create these regulations. Because at the end of the day, there's so many technical specifications and experience that comes from being involved in the industry that can be very, very powerful feedback to help regulations be practical for all individuals. And it's fantastic. So if you're operating worldwide or you're training or you're, you're, you're doing these things, understand that India is a huge market. Now the United States, according to DJI, is the largest market for drones right now, but I quickly, I think that quickly India would overtake a place like the United States. I, I don't know if it would ever be able to overtake the United States' well, as market as share. Sales, yeah. Because India is a very price sensitive market. Um, yes, there's a lot of money in that country, but not as much as in the United States. And also, there are some applications that are simply not as important in countries like India that are very important here. And for example, accident like reconstruction. There are not a lot of infrastructures for accident reconstruction uh, you know, facilities and stuff like that in India. It simply doesn't work in those economies. I mean, I would love it to work. I would love to increase the transparency of data and enable, you know, more of this, this concrete data that's realistic, that actually helps people and is actually very practical. But today, a lot of those infrastructures simply don't exist in countries like India. Wow, there's so much going on in the drone space right now. It is incredible. It's an, it's it's an amazing market. And, yeah. you know, one thing is a lot of times you know, folks like me in tech, we're like, yeah, our, our app or, you know, this tech is saving the world or changing the world. And a lot of times you, you hear that and you're like, that's just, that's nonsense. But drones are genuinely changing the world. And it, for everyone from people in Africa to guys wanting to film real estate with drone base. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is, I, there's, it is there the is a game. very wide range of applications Etc. And I mean, this is something where drones are touching almost every single industry. Yeah, absolutely. Anga, thank you so much for coming on the yeah. show once again, man. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Guys, don't forget too, we do have a training coming up together. If you want to join us in Ashburton, Virginia, December 5th through 7th, just go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash crash mapping NTSB, and you'll find all the information. That is going to do it for us today. Thanks again for watching. Thank you again for coming on the show and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching another episode of Ask Drone You.